The steeds that carry me carried me as far as ever my spirit desired. Since they brought me and set me on the renowned way of the goddess, who with her own hands leads the man who sees through all things, along that way I was led. On that way the wise steeds carried me, drawing my chariot, and maidens showed the way. And the axle, glowing in the socket of my chariot, gave forth a sound as of a pipe, for it was urged round by the whirling wheels at each end when the daughters of the sun hastened to bring me into the light. They removed their veils from their faces as we left the abode of night. There we saw the gates of the ways of night and day, fitted above with lintel and below with a threshold of stone. The gates were high in the air, closed by mighty doors, and the goddess of justice, whose vengeance is stern, retains the keys that fit them. The maidens flattered her with gentle words and skillfully persuaded her to lift the bolted bars from the gates. Then the doors were thrown open, and they revealed a wide opening, when the bronze hinges swung backwards in their sockets, which were fastened with rivets and nails. Straight through the gates on the broad way did the maidens guide the horses and the chariot, and the goddess greeted me kindly, and took my right hand in hers as she uttered these words. Welcome, noble youth, that comes to my abode on this chariot that is tended by immortal charioteers. It is no ill fortune, but justice and right that has sent you forth to travel on this way, which lies far indeed from the beaten track of men. To be on this way means that you should learn all things. The unshaken heart of persuasive truth, as well as the opinions of mortals, and which is no real truth at all. But none the less you shall learn of these conventional things, also since you must also scrutinize how it was inevitable that men came to believe in seeming convention, rather than the unshakable truth, as you go through all things on your journey. Come now, and preserve my story as you have heard it. I will tell you the only two ways to think there are. The first, namely, that being is, and that it is impossible for being not to be. That is the way of conviction, for truth is its companion. The other way, namely, that being is not, and that it is not necessary for being to be. This way, I tell you, is a wholly untrustworthy way, for you cannot know non-being, that is impossible, and nor can you utter it. For it is the same thing that can be thought of and that can be. It is the same to me from what place I begin, for to there I shall come back again. It is necessary to say and to think being, for being is and it is not possible for non-being to be. This I order you to ponder. I shall start my exposition with the true way of seeking, and then go on to the conventional way which mortals, knowing nothing, wander two-headed along, with the helplessness in their breasts that steers their wandering mind. Along this way they journey, deaf and blind, bewildered, as indecisive herds, for whom both being and non-being are judged the same, and yet not the same, for them the path turns back on itself. For this shall never be, that the things that are not are. Restrain your thought from this way of seeking, and let not habit compel you to cast a wandering eye or sounding ear upon this deceitful path. But use reason alone to judge between these two ways that I have set before you. After this, only a single way is left, namely, that being is. With this way, there are very many signs that what is, is uncreated and indestructible alone, complete, immovable, 
and without end. It was not once, nor will it some day be, since it is it, it is now, altogether, single and continuous. For what birth will seek for being? How and from where could it have grown? I will not permit you to say or think that being came into being from non-being, for it is impossible to say or think that being is not. For what necessity would have stirred being to grow later or earlier if it began out of nothing? Thus, being must either be completely or not at all. Nor will the force of evidence ever point to anything coming to be from nothing and into being besides being. For this reason, justice does not permit being to come to be or to perish by loosening her shackles but holds being fast. The decision on these matters depends on this. Being is or is not. And since it has been decided, as was necessary, to leave one way unthought of and nameless, as it was no real way, and the other has being and is true, how could being ever be in the future? How could being ever have come into being in the past? For if it came into being in the past, or it is going to be in the future, then is it is not undivided in the now. Thus, on this way, coming to be is extinguished and destruction is unheard of, and nor can being be divided, since it is everywhere all alike, and nor is there more of being here and less of being there since that would prevent it from being continuous and coherent. Hence it is false, since all is full of being. Being is all continuous, for being is everywhere in contact with being, unchanging within the limits of in the mighty chains. Being is without beginning or end, since coming to be and passing away have been banished driven away by true conviction. It stands continuous and fixed in its place, for mighty necessity holds being within the bonds of the limit which encircles being. It is not right for being to be incomplete, for if being was lacking, it would lack everything. It is the same thing that can be thought of and can be, for without being, you will not find thinking, for nothing else is, nor will be, besides being. For fate has shackled it to be whole and unchanging, which is why it has been named all things that mortals have established and convinced themselves are true, coming into being and passing away, to be and not to be, to change place and to exchange bright color. But since being has an outer limit, it is complete and well-rounded from every side. Like a perfect sphere, it is everywhere equally far from the middle, for being cannot be greater in one place and smaller in another, for there is no non-being which could prevent being from reaching out in all directions equally. And nor is being such that there could be more of it here and less of it there since it all inviolably is, it is everywhere equal to itself, since it meets its limits equally in all directions, such changeless is that for which, as a whole, the name is being. Here shall I end my trustworthy speech and discourse on the truth. Henceforth you will learn of the opinions of mortals, as you give ear to the deceitful ordering of my words. Mortals have settled their minds to speak of two forms, one of which they should have left out. In not doing so, that is where they go astray from the truth. They have assigned an opposite substance to each thing, and marked each as distinct from one another. To one thing they allot the fire of heaven, 
light, thin, and in every direction the same as itself, but at the same time not the same as its opposite. The opposite substance is opposed to fire, dark, night, which is regarded as compact and heavy body. Of these I will tell you of the whole arrangement as it seems to men in order that no mortal may surpass you in knowledge. Now that all things have been named light and night, and the things that which belong to the force of each have been assigned to these substances and to those, everything is full at once of light and dark night, both equal, since neither is the same as the other. And you shall know the origin of all the things up high, and all the signs in the sky, and the resplendent works of the glowing sun's clear torch, and from where the things arose, and you shall likewise learn of the wandering deeds of the round-faced moon, and of her origin. You shall know, too, of the heavens that surrounded us, whence they arose, and how necessity took them and bound them to hold the limits of the stars, how the earth and the sun and the moon and the sky that is common to all, and the Milky Way, and the outermost Olympus, and the burning might of the stars arose. The narrow rings of the sky are filled with unmixed fire, and the rings surrounding them are filled with night, and in the midst of these rushes their portion of fire, in the midst of these circles is the divinity that directs the course of all things, for she rules over all painful birth and all begetting, driving the female to the embrace of the male and the male to embrace the female. First of all the gods, she conceived Eros. Shining by night with borrowed light, wandering round the earth, always straining her eyes to the beams of the sun. And the earth is rooted in water. For what at any time the mixture of the much wandering body is, so is thought present to humans. For that same faculty which humans used to think, namely the constitution of their limbs, is the same for each and every one. For what preponderates in them is thought. On the right, boys, and on the left, girls. When woman and man mix the seeds of love, a force is formed in the veins from different bloods. If it preserves the proper proportion, it produces well-built bodies. For if, when the seeds are mixed, the strength of each blood are in conflict, they do not constitute a unity in the body formed by mixture, and cruelly they will torment the nascent sex with double seed. Thus, according to men's opinions, did things come into being, and thus they are now? In time, men think, they will grow up and pass away. To each of these things, men have assigned a fixed name.